Okay, I'm starting up a stream. All right. Resurrecting an old project called the Data Disintegrator. So let's go to Projects, Make Directory, Data Disintegrator. And copy from media AS PSF shared Oh right, I don't have it don't have it uh, over there yet. Hold on. Push SH Oh, that pushed the build too. I guess it's okay. Data disintegrator receive.sh. And receiving the project. File open folder. Hey there, Nightshade dude. Guess a wild rhyme has appeared. Projects, data disintegrator. There's nothing. Yes, we're using Clang 14. And I gotta try to get this to work again. Could not find Bison or Flex. All right, we're gonna need those. So, can I please have my shell? Here we go. Um, Forget on yeah, it's apt, right? So apt. I haven't done this in a while. Uh pseudo apt. Password for Rimu is Rimu. And upgrade. How does this affect my streaming? It doesn't affect it at all. That's great. Hey there, Epic Unknown. Hey there, C17R. And hey there, Sarian. Yeah, I'm starting up a new, well, I'm re resurrecting an old project called the Data Disintegrator. And I'll just leave you guys in suspense about what it is um, until I get this up and running. I basically didn't do any prep for the stream other than make sure I could build this thing and run it on, on the Mac. And now I'm trying to do the same thing on um, live on the stream on this Linux VM. I know, now you know my password to, on my virtual machine. Shucks, I'm gonna get hacked now. It's downloading a new kernel. What kernel are we on now? 6.2.0-34 and it's going to go to, I don't see it now. That's what we already had. Anyway, I don't see it. Um, yeah, so I want flex, right? And I want bison. Okay, so let's rerun CMake. Found bison, found flex. Okay, and then we're want. What do I want to build? Not all, but I want to build the formatting. Well, actually, I want to build the um, parse format. Build. Wow. Okay. Cool. It works. Pending update of Chromium. Chrome is going to update itself. All right. Um, we got the thing to run. So we'll go to the terminal. I don't need, don't need two terminals, right? Just one. Uh, build. Uh, parse format. Data disintegrator parse format. Format. How, how ironic. Exec format error. 
I can't run it. That's weird. Oh, oh, wait. I think I know why. It's building it for something else. Because I had an old build folder. Hold on. I need to, um... I think I need to clear out... Oh, it was building it in build VS Code. Okay. So build must be, um... From the other machine. So let me remove it. So I don't get completely confused. The It's uh, from the... From the, um... From the Mac itself. So remove build, it's build VS code. Okay. Parse format. There we go. Okay. So let me see if I remember how to do this. I um want to um pick an easy file format. So what if we pick a GIF? GIF's not too bad, right? GIF format. Uh, uh, here we go. GIF file format. No, back to here. Oh yeah, I need to fix the today command. This is C++ stream. It's going to be a C++ stream for a bit because I'm resurrecting an old C++ project, but don't worry, I'm going to oxidize it. Uh, let's... Edit com today. Today. Re resurrecting an old project. I'm going to be giving away secrets here. Resurrecting an old project. Resurrecting an old tool for parsing binary files. That's what we're doing. Put that in the put that in, in the clipboard. Paste it there. Uh, what does project say? Okay, that needs to change. Project. Remu is um, starting up. Well, restarting. Restarting a project. Restarting an old project. Ah, stop. Stop complaining. Actually, what? There's just too many things in my bar here. Uh, how about we get rid of C make tools for a bit. It's not markdown. It's just plain text. Give me a break. Okay. Right. It's restarting an old project. Don't know how to word this. Okay, why don't I just copy from the today command? Resurrecting an old tool for parsing binary files. There. Okay. That's what I'm doing. The secret has been exposed. So, um, Uh, what I want to do here. Okay, I want to make a folder or something for like examples or something or like a staging uh, staging area. How about we call it staging area or stage? I think I want to ignore that. So we're going to say ignore the stage. And in the stage, I'm going to make a file like a GIF dot format. Okay, and then um. I uh, need I need I need to find the GIF file format, and then I'm going to write it in my domain specific language, and then I'm going to use it to parse a GIF file. Okay, so um, what I need is like 
the actual file format specification, if I can find it. Terminology, pronunciation. That's an example. But there's like an old specification. Maybe under the references. Ah, uh -huh, here we go. Here we go. Found it. Syntax block terminator header. Here we go. The GIF header. Okay. I want to save this file. So how do I do that? How come they make it so hard to do stuff like save? Where's the save? Right click. How, where's the down? Is it download downloads? How come there's no save as? It's not this button, right? Oh. <sighs> come on, computer. Chrome, why you do this to me? How come there's no save as? More tools? Ah, more tools. Save page as. <laughs> okay, uh, um, home, projects, data disintegrator, stage. Uh, we're going to call it um, the spec. Well, how about we just call it gif89a.txt. Okay, and then go over here, and then we have gif89.txt. Okay. So blah, 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 and a blah, and a blah, and a blah. Header. Irritatingly, it's slightly more, oh, or maybe it's just my window. Slightly more than 80 characters wide? No, it's just my window. What the heck? Why do I have to intrude upon chat to see all that text? Is it because of the these line numbers are long? Oh, maybe it's because of this bar. I don't know. I didn't have to scroll before. Anyway, okay. Yes, so. Let's at least see if we can parse the version number out, right? So signature is GIF. Version number will be some string. So, um... See if I can remember from heart. I think it's GIF. Okay, I can't remember. <laughs> uh, let me cheat and um, pull from uh, another project. So hold on. You can't see this. I'm just going to like pull a random thing. Okay, and then I'm going to go back into the virtual machine and hit paste. So here's, so here's what it kind of looks like. Um, so if I want to, if I expect the, the first, um, yeah, I don't remember this at all. I expect there to be a header. header and um, the header has the signature and a version right signature version signature let's just keep this down here example all right signature is um G. How do I do a raw thing? I think this is how I did it. So it's unsigned integer G8. Uh, 
I eight F eight. All right, and then version. Okay, yeah, it's it's interpreted as a string. How did I do that? Oh, okay. So it's just a value. So yeah, just I'm peeking. I'm peeking in another window. All right. So um, I guess we'll just put it in here. Actually, then I don't need these as separate structures. This is just um, peeking a little bit. Oh, it's S. Okay, I have a built-in type called S. S signature 24 bits. S version 24 bits. There we go. Right, so I know I'm not explaining very much, but, but um, hopefully you'll Hopefully I won't bore you to tears. You'll be able to figure out as I'm going along. But what I'm what I'm working on is a is resurrecting an old project, which is a parser, which can uh, parse any generic binary format, whether it's a file or a stream, or um, a protocol buffer or whatever. And the way it works is you specify the format and how to parse it in a domain specific language like this. So we're going to add more to this, right? But to start off, let's just say that we're only going to parse the header. So you describe the overall format, and then the format can have su uh, sub elements. And at the element at the um, at the leaf nodes, so to speak, are these built in types. So you're basically saying there's a string, we're going to call it signature, and it's 24 bits long. And then another string called version, it's also 24 bits long. So if I use this program in a sense with my parser and operate on a gif file or gif file it will um it should let me see what the signature and the version number is preview panel good morning lob saying too so i need to get myself an example gif file how about we get um twitch lull emote GIF. Exactly. I want that. Well, that's even better. Uh, view file. So that's a GIF file, right? Save image as. Lull. Save. Okay. So we have lull. Oh, <laughs> it crashed VS Code. <laughs> Maybe I should pick one that's not animated. I should pick one that's not animated, right? So it doesn't crash VS Code. That's funny. Oh, okay, it didn't crash at that time. Anyway, okay, so we have a uh, we have lol.gif, right? So um, first, I want to demonstrate what the the first tool that I had made. For for this is the parser for the domain specific language or the 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 um yeah the parser the, the compiler it's actually it's a compiler it's a full compiler we had we use flex and bison i made a compiler to compile this domain specific language so uh, let's go to the terminal and go to uh build this code um Formatting, right? So, no, it's not that. It's a parse format. Parse format. Right. Data, and then we give it a path to the um, stage and the GIF. There we go. So, hide that. Uh, how come it only gave me the signature, but not the version? And I hit save there. So yeah, it it's, 
these should look like abstract syntax trees. So GIF has a part which is a header, header has a part which is a signature, uh, but hot conversion is not showing up. Okay, there it is. Okay, that's just an artifact of the terminal. Okay, so very simple abstract syntax tree, right? So a GIF has got a header, a header has a signature and a version. Okay, so then the next tool is um, show the uh, CMake tool stuff again. Um, it is the actual decompose tool. Hopefully this builds too. All right, so that's that's cool. It built. Decompose. All right, so the way this works is you run it with the format and then the data file and then the format files. So the format is the name of the uh, the element that's the overall top level. So we would say GIF, and then the data file is uh, lull.gif, and then the format file is uh, gif.format. Okay, and then I think I have to do dash R, right, for report. There we go. So it parsed out the signature is GIF, the version is 89A. Awesome. Okay. So I think if I remember the right, the, this is the range in bits. So L stage lull. It's um, one, it's over a megabyte, right? So over eight, about 8 million bits, 8.8 .8 million bits. And it says the signature is the first 48 bits. Yeah, this is is this is including bit zero, but but stopping before bit eight, so forty eight, if I remember right. So it's like zero to forty eight with the parentheses instead of a um, a bracket, right? So it's non inclusive of the end, and then in that the first twenty four bits is GIF, and then bit twenty four to forty eight are eighty nine A. Right. So then let's do a little bit more parsing. Um, Because I need to have enough of the um, format specification that when I start, so the, so the whole idea of um, doing this on stream is I want to resurrect this project, and you know how I hate C plus plus now, and I love Rust, so why not take an old project that did something that I found interesting, and convert it to Rust? Uh, the biggest challenge for me, I think, is going to be the compiler part because that is um, leveraging Bison and Flex. And um, I don't yet know if I want to continue to use like those tools to gen to com to generate the compiler or just do it from scratch. I I I have the bias of wanting of of leaning towards making stuff from scratch, but that's not always a good thing. Okay, so we have the signature and the version, right? So what comes after that? Uh, we need an overall like overall file format specification. What is it? I guess if I were to slow down and read this, it would maybe make more sense. This is this go? No, not go. Go with logos and Chomsky for parsing. Um, here, I'll give you a taste of what the how the compiler is written currently. So in formatting, we specify the lexer, all right, with flex. So we're going to interoperate with Bison. We're not going to run interactively. We're using a Bison locations. It's a reentrant scanner. We're going to maintain a line count. We have conditions. Um, this is this should say end condition, not start condition. Oh wait, no, these are start conditions for when scanning the body and end limit. So this is when we're parsing streams. So here's the top matter. We're gonna include 
um, our token symbols from the parser. Um, yeah, this this probably doesn't make any sense to, to you guys unless you've built a compiler before with Bison and Flex. But basically, this is kind of like boilerplate. Um, here's where it gets interesting. So this is what we, how we define for the lexer uh, how, uh, how to parse different tokens. So a digit is just a single character in the range of 0 through 9. Hex is, yeah, actually it's a character class, right? The character class is 0 through 9 or A through F or capital A through capital F. Alpha is A through Z or capital A through Z or underscore. Alpha num is a combination of alpha and number. The sign is plus or minus. Exponent is either E or capital E. And then a plus or a minus or plus, maybe. And then 0 through 9, 1 or more. Parsing what kind of binary files? Any kind of binary files, Tinspin. So this specification parses GIF files. See? It parsed my lol.gif. We only specified how to parse the header. Right, 24-bit signature, 24-bit version, but see, it parses it. Okay, provide some context to what I'm trying to achieve. Welcome to the stream. What I'm trying to achieve is I'm taking an old parser project and porting it to Rust. And um, I don't have a whole lot of time today. We're just setting up, uh, this is the very first stream. That's why in the title it says 001. So tomorrow it will be 002, and maybe we'll be doing something more substantial. But I wanted to first make sure the old compile the old parser, which is C based, still works on, on the virtual machine and kind of exercise it a little bit and kind of explain a little bit. Is it yours? It's mine, yes. I didn't get it from anyone else. Um, this is one of my very long term projects I've been working on for years. Um, it actually started when I learned compilers in college. Um, and I had this idea that. Um, I can make my own domain specific language that um, describes how to how to parse stuff and then um, I could just take specifications like GIF here and um, code it in my language and then use my tool to parse those files. Looking on Google for what it is. Yeah, I don't hopefully you won't find it because I have I never published it open source. It's like a private thing. Okay, so continuing on what the um, what tokens we have in our language, right? We have digits, hex, alpha, alpha, num, sign, exponent, content of a string, right? So we can have um, anything that's not a double quote, a uh, character turn or line feed, or we can have an escaped double quote. Makes sense, right? Rules section. So here are the reserved words in our language. If, else if, else for, while, in, error, break, return, nil, set, map, vector, local, and copy. And then all other words are identifiers. So starting with an alpha and then having zero or more alpha nums. And then this, here's where it gets interesting. So you can have data attached to tokens. So we actually take the content of the token and we um, put it into this um, S. Uh, which is this YYL val is like a union. So S is like the part of the union that we use for strings. And then we, we say that the, the, uh, the, um, what do you call it? The distinguisher, the, the determinant, whatever, the, the thing that says what, what the union actually holds, it's an identifier. If we see this pattern, see these patterns are kind of like regular expressions, right? So we might have a sign we have one or more digit followed by, um, I think, oh yeah, for a little floating, literal floating point value, you have to have a dot followed by one or more digits followed by um, maybe an exponent, right? But here it's a decimal and we use the D part of the uh, uh, union. And then a literal integer value uses the I. It's maybe a sign. Um, and then a zero, and then, all right, because it's octal, a zero followed by one or more zero through sevens. And um, we use the string to long, 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 I guess, 64 bit long, um, and say it's base eight. Hexadecimal is going to be a zero followed by a lower or uppercase x, one or more hex digits, parse to this base 16. 
literal value in binary is zero and then a B, and then is it one or more zeros or ones? And then it gets a little bit more interesting because we're, you can't use string to LL with base two. So I was just literally like parsing it. <laughs> um, decimal is very easy. Um, and we had to put that last, otherwise it would match, like these would also, this would also match as a, as a decimal, right? So if it doesn't begin with a zero, then it is a decimal and we have one or more digits with possibly a sign in front. Okay, there we here, here we have the operators that I have in my language. So decrement, increment, arrow, left, right, shift, less than or equal to, all that good stuff. Um, nothing unusual there, right? Except for maybe flip and not are different symbols. Okay, double quote begins the string. So this syntax in flex means we're um, we're shifting to a new state. So in the string content state, um, we only match rules that start with this. So um, if we see a double quote, we go into this state and then we see a string. Oh, this is a, this is a fake rule to match um, if we um, are missing the terminator, at, missing the string terminator at the end. So if we get all the way to the end of line without seeing the uh, the terminator, then it's a bad string. Also, if we reach the end of file um, and we're looking for the end of the string, then it's also a bad string. Otherwise, the content of the string is... Uh, how does this work? When we're in the content state, which we are in the beginning, looking for zero or more string continuations, so we begin looking for the end terminator and oh yeah it looks like i'm parsing every single character so we're, here's all the escape sequences right uh if we're if we're, we're we begin not in the escape sequence right so it's zero so we're at case zero why did i put case zero at the default i don't know if we see a backslash we go to the escape one state otherwise we just take the character literally in Escape one state, it's a, we've seen a backslash, right? So if we see an A, it's a, it's a, a alarm. B backspace, F form feed, N new line, R character turn, etc. Um, it gets interesting if you see an X because then it's like, oh, it's a hex code. So go to escape four state, etc. And I think there's, yeah, if we see a backslash followed by two digits for between zero and nine, it's um, interpreted as an octal. Is that right? Zero through seven inclusively? Yeah, it's an octal. Why do I have a two here? Shouldn't that be a three? Oh, because the first digit's already been parsed, right? So, uh, no, that's not right. Oh, because the first digit's special. Why do I have... This shouldn't be a backslash, should it? Anyway, errors in my comments. Anyway, that's how we parse a string. <laughs> uh, we recognize the end of the string if we're in the content state and we see a double quote. Then we have the whole string. Um, oh, wait, no, this is a string without content. Never mind. String without content is just an empty string. String terminator goes back to the initial state. I think the way this works is um, we're just building up this S string and then that just pops us back out. Right, comments are anything that um, starts with double slash, fo double forward slash, has anything in it and then ends in the new line. White space is any of these characters, character turn line feed tab or space. Anything else is an illegal character. So that's our lexer. And then um, I'll show you guys what the um, parser is. Okay, so yeah, I think I decided not to try to generate C++ code. It actually generates C99 code. So this is boilerplate for the top of our parser. And then here's that union I described. So all symbols from the lexer end up filling in one of these for every symbol. Um, 
it, whether or not we use it. So the symbol might have an attached string, might have an attached integer, a floating point value, or um, yeah, these three are used by the lexer, and I think these four are used by the parser when we build up more complex things in the grammar, right? So more boilerplate. Uh, here's our error handler. Um, I have a callback structure that we use to call whatever this parser is built into. We'll call a callback whenever we get a syntax error. Say what the line number, call number, and all that is. Um, yeah, when we get a format successfully parsed, we emit it this way. Okay, and then again, the parser is written in C. It um, we have a scanner object rather than having global variables. That's what this API pure means. So no global variables, which is good. We remember the line number and column number of every symbol. Um, I have a a type of type array scanner object that's shared between the parser and scanner. Okay, and then here are our tokens. So there's the special. Um, yeah, bad string is interpreted as a, as an illegal token. And actually, these are declarations, right? Why did I have bad string illegal? I think as bad string can be emitted by the lexer and illegal, I wanted to have other things mapped to illegal. Anyway, um, we have identifier, which uses the S part of the union. Integer uses I, decimal uses D, string uses S. Then we have... Um, reserved words. And I think I have, yeah, right. We list them kind of like some of them on the same line and some of them not because the order in which you list these like defines the order of, of uh, like associativity, right? So um, we want if to be like the outer, all of these are like outermost syntax and these, these other ones are innermost. So we have, um, and this, if you have left and right, they're actually like left associative or right associative. I think if it's just token, it's not associative either way. It's sort of neutral. Comma, this is um, assign accumulate. That's equals plus. Plus equals? No, this is equals and plus plus are both right associative. We have or and and. We have non-associated in. I forget what that is. Um, Inclusive, exclusive? What was that? I need to go back to my my lexer to see what those were. Inc oh, inclusive or exclusive or. That's what that means. So inclusive and exclusive or. Mask is what is and. Equal, not equal to left, so then left greater than less than greater than less than or equal to greater than equal to left shift right shift minus and plus so here like if we're talking about order of operations we have to list minus and plus first because it's less um it's weaker bound or i forget the proper terminology but like if we have like a plus b times c we want to do b times c first and then the plus a if i had these lines flipped it would do a plus b first and then multiply by c so and then right associated, we have the not, the flip, the negative, decrement, increment, and then most tightly bound is the dot, the parentheses, the brackets, and the braces. Right, and then we have the, um, the four things that the parser is adding for tokens that use um, elements in the, um, the, uh, the union, and that's Format statements, references, and expressions, and these are the these are the um, tokens that use that part of the union. We have here's where we define our destructor. So if it's an if it's an S, we use free to free it. If it's formats, destroy format statement, destroy statement, all that good stuff. And okay, here we go. Here's the grammar for the language. So formats can be an empty, like or it can have some formats plus another format or it could have some for list of formats and something illegal so this is the catch catch-all rule where we have a, like an illegal character like a syntax error right 
or a lexer error. A lexer error will be caught by this rule. So the idea is you, um, for a grammar, you want to describe the input as um, matching some rule at the very top, which is formats. So one of these has to match. So either our file is completely empty, our file has, um, or our formats is either empty, our formats is some other formats, which should start with empty and then have another format. So this, see how this is kind of recursive? So if you had zero formats, you'd match this rule. If you had one format, you'd match this rule where this one is empty. If you had two formats, you'd match this rule where this one matches this rule again. And then inside of that, that one's empty, right? So this is sort of chained recursively. Um, and we would end up calling emit format for every format, right? Or if you have, at some point, you have some illegal character, you'd have some legal stuff followed by some something illegal, and then we generate an error. So what is a format? A format is an identifier, some optional um, argument list, left brace, statements, right brace. So, so going back to here, right? And that is the identifier. That's um, the left brace. That's the right brace. And statements is this stuff. Or here's statements also. So here's an example of a statements with just one thing, and here's one with two things. Um, how much time? I got like eight minutes to, more to talk about this. So I'm mostly going to cover the grammar today. Um, tomorrow, I think I'll just. I'll get a little bit deeper into the format of GIF, and then at some point, I got to start porting this to Rust, and I have to decide whether I'm going to do it, do all this stuff from scratch, or leverage Bison and Flex, or leverage some Rust equivalent of that. Anyway, um, a statement would be done here, right? Statements, a sequence of statements. So again, the, the chain pattern, right? We either have an empty statement or we have some bunch of statements and then another statement, or we have some illegal character, right? So if it's just a single statement, then this statements will be empty and this one will not be empty. So we chain will be null. So we'll go into here and just we have a single statement, right? In the case of this, it'll match two rules recursively. The first one will match this. When we see that, it's just one statement, right? But when we see that line, we'll end up matching this rule because chain will be this part and then this will be the next statement. So we take the last, we, we take that chain and it's sort of we're forming a linked list. Um, we're, um, linking the, the statement to be, um, how does this work? All right, the chain is sort of the linked list and the linked list has a, uh, has a last pointer and a first pointer, I think, or a last and a next or something like that. So from the last one, the next one is this next statement. The statements to go back, you go back to that last one and then last moves up to statement. Statement next is the chain itself. I think it's because it's a circular linked list and the head is a special empty node that just is used to, to handle the list, if I remember right. So anyway, what is a statement, right? So a statement is a statement body. And we have a bunch of rules. I think this is just, yeah, this is just a wrapper rule so that we can attach the uh, line and column boundaries of the statement to the, to the token, uh, to the, um, yeah, to the grammatical um, entity so that if we have, if we want to, if we wanted to, we can list out uh, where in the format file the, the, uh, the statement was, right? So the statement body, here's where it gets more complicated, right? A statement body could be a part specification, which is, this is the part specification, right? In fact, all three of these are part specifications, right? Actually, this might not be. What is a part specification? It consumes some bits. So we have some subformat identifier and then optional part, optional expression list, optional assignment, op optional bound, and an interp. So yeah, I have comments here because this one's complicated. Subformat 
is the format for the part. So it could be a built-in format or it could be we could build off of things. So like S is a built-in format called string and or we can build off of it, right? If it's a header, then it has to find header as a format somewhere else. Um, so yeah, we can have arguments, all that stuff. Right now we don't. Oh, so these elemental ones um, probably don't match this rule at all, right? So we'll have to see which one it is. So it's not an ignore. Conditional logic is not that. It's not a for loop. It's not a while loop. Uh, I think it's bounded region. Defines a region of input bits. Right. Oh, no, it's not that, because that begins with a left, <laughs> left bracket. Attribute accumulation. So which one is it, then? OK, it must be that first one, then. It must be this. So I'm guessing that the way I did it was this is a bound. That that must be a bound. So that's the identifier. That is the part, right? Or maybe it's this one? That's this. So what's that then? That would be part. So you have to, we have to look what, what a part is. And then I'm thinking that this is a bound. Oh, and all of this um, ends with a semicolon, right? Statement. Um, where do I specify that we have semicolons between them? Statement. <coughs> Statement body. I don't see semicolon here. Where's my semicolon? There's semi breaks. Oh, it was just at the end of all of them. It was there. I just didn't see it. Actually, it's not there. Semi must be built into something else, like maybe interp or bound or something like that. <coughs> okay, anyway. Um, actually, maybe what would help is if uh, we turned on the... Um, when I actually run the f formatting... No, it's parse format. When I run this, I think I can like no help. I was hoping like to have it break down this a little bit further. Yeah. Well, we can't or I don't know how to do that yet. Anyway. Uh An optional bound is a colon and an expression, right? So that's a colon and an expression, right? That's an optional bound. Ah, right. So interp matches the semicolon. Or we could have a brace with some um, interpretation di dictionary. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, I'm out of time. Um, I'm just... I'm reading this and talking about it mostly just to refresh my memory about how my how my own grammar works. But I know I, I know I know I didn't do much today, but we did successfully parse out the header of a GIF file using my tool and tomorrow I'm going to um Fill in more, fill in more of the grammar, and it's, I think my goal right now is um, fill in an, a, um, not not completely all of the GIF file because there's there's quite a lot in the format, but enough that we can get some interesting things out, and um, kind of exercise the both the lexer and the parser, and then um, I think the first step is to decide like 
how to write the lexer. So right now the le lexer is in C using flex and flex generates the lexer code from the specification, which is really just a list of regular expression matching rules and kind of just emits the lexer code for you. So either we use that and we have it emit Rust or we um, use something else like this that also takes regular expressions and generates code, or maybe I just do it by hand. Because um, my Lexer is not that complicated, right? Probably the most complicated thing in here would be something like uh, this, where we have like maybe a sign, one or more digits, a dot, one or more digits, maybe an exponent. That's probably the most complicated matching rule in here. The rest of it's pretty straightforward. It's it's either a reserve word, or it's an identifier, or it's an operator, right? Okay, string is a little bit complicated, just because we have like escape codes and stuff like that. Anyway, I think that's the, the next thing, is to get the lexer ported to Rust so that we can um, have it generate the same thing, right? The well, actually, I don't ha I don't have a tool to show what, how this is. This when you run on the, through the lexer ends up giving you a token string, and that that's a token, and then one, and then one more, and then one there, and then one there, and then one there. So we should be able to get a token stream out, and it should look the same as the C lexer. By hand would be interesting, but is it a waste of my time? I don't know yet. So I need to decide, is uh, writing one by hand a waste of time, not interesting, or maybe it's interesting, maybe I should just do it for the st to make it interesting on the stream? Yeah, Lexers aren't all that interesting. Right, so we have a mixed set of opinions here. Some people might find it interesting, others might not. I think what I'd, I'll do is I'll do some research and see, like, other people who have written compilers in Rust, what do they use? Maybe this, if there's something that we can skip ahead and um, maybe start with something that's like what Flex did for me for C, maybe start with that, get it up and running, and then if people still want to see it, we can replace the Lexer with a hand-coded one. Yeah, and then the same thing for the um, parser generator. So, so I got to have something that takes all these rules and, um, you know, builds a parser out of it. And a lot of it is just like, it's an algorithm that's matching, um, you know, matching rules and reduce, basically you're reducing a token stream down to a single thing. In the end, this all gets reduced down to a format object or a formats object, right? And um, formats... Where's where's the where's formats first? Right, we get down to a single formats thing which has no value, but we have a side effect of emitting calling an emit format callback for every format object. So we get a a like we get a I think that's how, why it generated this. Um, this is a format and this is a format and each one's an abstract syntax tree but yeah um totally out of time gotta go to work now so we have to pass you on all you lovely people on to someone else Let me find who okay we're gonna go see why golang is poorly designed all right we're going to uh raid the primogen i will see you guys tomorrow hopefully Sorry, I haven't rated in a, or haven't streamed in a while, which also means I haven't rated in a while. Uh, work's been really um, demanding on my time, and I've been having a hard time trying to find time to stream. Also, I kind of reached the end of that last project, right? I had kind of figured out everything I wanted to at the time. So yeah, I needed some time to figure out what to do, and I think I got it. I'm I'm really into resurrecting this old project, so I'll work on that again tomorrow. See you guys. Bye.